know, the, the blender, the uh, best way to stay out of it is never get in it. But, you know, the problem is uh, half the time you're in it, you don't even know you're in it. What's up, guys, and thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Mindset Podcast. We have our good friend, Kevin Esteban, for the second time on our podcast. Anthony, why don't you go ahead and tell everyone listening to what happened to the original copy of, of Kevin's uh, yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, I gave you saying second time because uh, this is the second time we have him on. First video got deleted. We had to burn all the evidence. There's no traits. We had to let it go. Um, you know, Kevin was in... in yeah, having some safety issues, we he couldn't be no no videos <laughs> like that, so we had to let that one go. So welcome back, um, Kevin S. One, he's the athletic director for Saint Brendan High School. Um, he spearheaded the, everything that went on during the whole transformation of the athletic program, which is still currently in construction. But the, the new fields, football fields, uh, football team, spearheaded by this guy, uh, one of my mentors, uh, someone who's very well known at the Mindset Podcast, one of our biggest fans. Um, and we're super happy to have you, uh, Coach. I guess the first question I'll ask you is, why don't you explain to everybody, what does it mean to be in the blender? And how do you get out of the blender? Ah, man. <laughs> I remember the blender can apply to, uh, you know, real real world situation, you know. Uh, you know, you, you laugh because we always used to talk about it, you know, with the, with the relationship status and stuff when you're yeah. kind of up in the air with somebody. But, uh, you know, the, the blender, the uh, best way to stay out of it is never get in it. But, you know, the problem is... Uh, Half the time you're in it, you don't even know you're in it. So, you, know, you just find yourself asking for advice and this, whether it's a work situation, a relationship situation, or just a simple conversation where you're thinking to yourself, oh man, what should I do with this? Or, oh, should, like, for example, your presidency, like, man, should I run for this? Yeah. And you find yourself kind of back and forth for a couple of days. Oh, should, should I text this girl? Oh, well, you're back and forth. The next thing you know, you're, you're in hyperspeed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, talk right there. The, yeah, that's some good stuff. And the way to not to get out of the blender is not to get in the blender in the first place. Yeah, right? That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, Next thing you know, you're yeah. in it. Next thing you know, Next you're in you it. Know, yeah. yeah. Way of awesome. It. That's awesome. Hey, man, the last time we talked to you, we talked a lot about work ethic because, I mean, you're a freak of nature with your routines, your your work ethic. I mean, <laughs> talk to you, you're, you're up at four or five o'clock in the morning working out. I'm curious to know, especially right now, um, your dynamic during quarantine. Like, has your has your routine shifted at all, or is it kind of stayed the same, or have you had to adjust a little bit, or how's that going for you? Um, so uh, my routine when the quarantine started kind of uh, it, it shifted a little bit, but you know one one thing I really did um you know driving I was driving home from St. Brendan on the Friday that like athletics and stuff got shut down. It's like when the, it was that Friday, it was like March thirteenth, I think, uh, where they made an announcement that schools were shut down and it was. I was, we actually had a softball game at the school and it got canceled and uh, got home early. I was on the way home and I thought to myself, like, man, this, this stuff's going to get real bad. Um, you know, I really got to find, I'm going to have a lot of free time now. Like, I really got to find something to kind of take up that free time and kind of challenge myself to take on something new. Um, you know, I, obviously everybody knows, you know, that I get up early and do whatever, but, you know, my, the stuff that I kind of always hated is like cardio based. So, you know, I thought to myself, you know what? Like, I'm going to get home and run you know, whatever it is. So I went out, I got home, put on my AirPods, these same ones that took me like 10 minutes to try to turn on right now. Uh, and uh, I took off running. I ran like uh, two miles. I remember I texted, I texted Juan and I was like, Hey, uh, I just ran two miles. And, you know, my mile pace was like nine, it was like a nine minutes and something, you know, it made, like nine minutes and like 30 seconds. So I sent it to Juan who's like the king of running. I got runs like 100 miles a day. Uh, and he, he tells me, Oh man, that's a decent pace, whatever. So, um, you know, when the quarantine started, what I really took on was the cardio thing. Um, and since that day, I pretty much have ran every single day. I never used to run like zero cardio. Uh, I used to lunge and stuff, but like actual running never since March 13th, I have pretty much developed a routine where I'm running at least one or two miles every day. Um, and that's something that I've really kind of taken on now where like, you know, I just mentioned to you, my pace was like nine minutes and 30 seconds. The other day I just ran a mile under seven minutes at like 640. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. And so I just kind of like, you know, the, the time-based stuff with the running is something I've got to really competitive with. So I, I still wake up and do my things at the same time. Still, I'm up at five every day since the quarantine started. Nothing's changed with that. I'm still working. 
Um, but at, but at night, I kind of been taking on the, the the whole running thing, and it gives me you know just to kind of stretch the day out because I'm so used to long days and stuff. That now I'm getting home a little bit earlier, obviously with the no sport and stuff. That uh, the running is something I've really really gotten into. It's funny you mentioned that because we talked to uh, Coach Juan. Uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Uh, we were texting him, and let me tell you, he he's he's he runs, he works out, man. He he was sending us our routine, cool. and his, his routine is in the morning. Um, he he focuses on the mind, so a lot of reading, listening to podcasts, that kind of stuff. He works out on the mind first, and then later on in the day, it's when he does the running and working out. He's working out twice a day now. So I told him, I'm like, hey man, that's some competition for Coach K. Yeah, <laughs> bro. I mean, that guy we talk all day, man. He's working out twice a day now. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Think about think about the fact you guys saw him. I mean, I've known him for for a long time, but think about the fact like you guys. You know, it must be funny for you guys. You see him when he was, you know, 200 some pounds. Looked like he, you know, probably going to McDonald's, Burger King every other day. And now you see him, and the guy's more ripped than all of us. Yeah, it's crazy. He could beat all of us up anytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that guy, it's, it's all, it's more mental than physical, man. That at the end of the day, it's a lot of mental stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like what you said now about it's more mental than physical because I've actually also taken on running a little bit more, like seriously, during this quarantine because obviously gyms are closed. You know, we're kind of sticking to home workouts and stuff. And I'm working on my mile right now, but I've come to the conclusion that you either like love it or you hate it. And I hate it, you know, I'm being brutally honest, but I still do it because I feel like, like you said, it's more mental than physical. And I mean, I guess my next question to you is, how do you still like find that drive, like still find that hunger during this whole quarantine? Because I feel like that's the hardest thing for people right now with that mindset. You know, I kind of, I was actually texting with Juan earlier, uh, I read an article today and, you know, a lot of people ask about the quarantine stuff. Like people were talking about like, oh, you know, how has your routine changed since the quarantine or, or what is this about the quarantine? You know, the quarantine is neither here nor there at the end of the day. You know, the hardest thing is really um, having, having like developing that, that strong, you know, you guys talk about the mindset and what is the mindset is developing your own mindset to kind of what fuels you, you know? Um, so we're talking about mental over physical, like everybody at the end of the day, you know, I don't care if you're, you know, the richest guy or the strongest guy or whatever it is, um, you're going to hit a rut, you know, like at some point, you know, every day you wake up, is not the best day, every your best, it's not the best workout day. It's not the best business day. It's not the best whatever day. Um, so it's really, it's not so much your question. It's how do you get out of the rut? Yeah. You know, because everybody hits the rut at some point, you know, we use you guys as an example, like you started the podcast or whatever. I'm sure there was a point where you thought to yourself, bro, should we be doing this? Like, bro, there's three, there's three cats on the Instagram live. Is it worth it? You know, is it this, at that point is when you, you got to kind of find what, what, what's going to push you, you know what I'm saying? And everybody has that, that, or everybody should have that, um, I guess kind of that nature or kind of that thing that you know, gets them going for me. I know that, you know, I, I'm big into like podcasts and, you know, audio books and stuff um, and, and certain music. Uh, and I know that when, you know, if I'm driving, I'm driving a workout at, you know, whatever time, sometimes it's five, five, 10 in the morning, I'm driving. I'm like, Man, I really don't want to do this. You know, there's certain music, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's different, you know, it's it different, different playlists and stuff like that. Um, But for me, it's turning on the right podcast that are guys are going to talk about the stuff that I usually do, you know, like whether it's getting up and working hard and doing all those things. And then when I hear those guys, the guys that I kind of like listen to and follow talking about it, I'm like, bro, like, what am I doing? Like, let's go, bro. Let's go. We got to go. You know, we got to go. Like everybody, everybody, I don't care who it is, is going to kind of fall into that. Hey, you know, you guys talk about like seeing the stuff, you're talking about, whether it's failure or whether it's falling on your face or, you know, in order to succeed, you got to fail. But, but, when you're doing what you guys do or like what, what, what I do or what, you know, certain people do, there's going to be a point where you're thinking to yourself, bro, this is not worth it. Or like, oh, this is not, bro, I don't want to do this today or whatever. And like at that point when you got to catch it, because that stuff is like quicksand, you know, a rut turns into a pit at the end of the day, if you let it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, how, how do you, how do you fall in love with the process? Right. Cause if you don't enjoy the process, you're not going to go through it. So how, like what, what, what tips do you have to, to loving it? How do you, how do you train your mind to start to love, uh, pain, physical pain? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, for me, you know, I've gone through kind of different phases. Um, I've always been someone that, uh, like I get a fix off of when people think I can't do something. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, in sports, 
or whether it's uh, lifting or whether it's uh, at work, whatever it is in their life. Like, for example, if people told me to go, uh, watch when you get married, you won't be able to wake up and, and do what you do. And, like, I made it a point to, to continue doing that. Or like, oh, watch when you have a kid. Like, everything's going to change. There's no way. Like, I'm doing that. Um, and I think that was something that I kind of used to pride myself on when I was younger, like maybe in my earlier, like mid twenties, I was really big into taking what other people said and that being my motivation, you mm -hmm. know, like why I was doing stuff was just basically because people were trying me or saying little stupid comments and I would make sure to like do it and let them know that I was doing it. You know, and I think that's something that like, kind of like people in your age, you know, I mean, you guys are a little bit more mature than, than the average person, but you know, in your early twenties, you ha you do a lot of stuff positive stuff but for the wrong reasons now i'm in kind of like a, a different phase where yeah that, that stuff's good you know like I, I like to you know prove people wrong but i do it more to kind of create the best version of myself if that makes sense yeah you know so what is the best me right, right. and that could be is it the best worker is it the strongest guy in the room is it whatever it is uh that stuff all kind of is my motivation now is being the best uh being the best ad uh being the best husband being the best father being the best uh, coach being the best friend, th those are the things that, that, that drive me, you know? Do you, do you compare yourself to people? No, I think, again, that's stuff that, that, that I used to do. I don't really do that now. Um, again, you, you'll see, like, when you're younger, your motivation is always based on, like, um, you know, you, the haters, for example. It's like, something like, oh, these guys are saying I can't do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then, like, now, it, as you get older, like, I don't really compare myself to people. Um, I just try to kind of just be the, the best version of right. me. But, right. you know, my biggest problem with that is something, you know, my biggest struggle, everybody obviously, you know, you guys, especially like uh, Gabe, I don't know that well, you know, and I've known him obviously associates with himself with you, with you, Anthony. So obviously I know he's a good guy, but like you, for example, you, you're someone that like you started the thing and you're like, Oh, Kevin's one of my mentors. Um, and for me personally, like my biggest struggle is that i'm never satisfied and that, that's a pro and a con like you think that oh kevin this kevin that but to me it's like i'm never it's a, it's my biggest problem is that no matter what i do i'm never like satisfied mm -hmm. so the highest moment i'm not even like happy at that point you know what i'm saying and it's a, it's a big problem that i have i'm always like i'm never like happy i'm always just trying to do more and do more and do more and do more and do more you right. know you I mean, based off what you're saying now, and I think you mentioned it a little bit earlier with the whole rut thing, are you ever like afraid that you might burn out at one point physically or mentally with, you know, your whole routine or is that something that just never crosses your mind? Not burn, burning out and it doesn't really, I don't know, I, that, that, when I do that, then I become somebody else because that's like, that's just soft to me. Yeah. That's like saying like, oh, are you guys going to, you know, stop doing what you're doing? And the day you do that, it's because you've allowed the negativity to kind of, get into whatever it is you're doing, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's, you know, podcast based or career based, like the drive you have is, is going to push you. But then while you're getting pushed in that direction, there's a lot of roadblocks or, or, you know, detours or whatever. And it's up to you. Are you willing to do that? You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're going down a street and the street's closed. You got to go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left to get back on that street. Are you willing to do that? You know, I, I can't answer that. You, you, that's something that you got to ask yourself. But for me, I'm, I'm the type that if I'm on, if I'm on that one way road and there's a detour, I'm just going to bulldoze through and I'm, you know, if it slashes my tires, I'm going to pick the car up and I'm going to go, but, but I'm going to, I'm going to get to where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I say it all the time. That's, that's why it kind of like me and Juan get along so well, you know, is that like whatever the end goal is, like we're going to get there or I'm going to get there. You know, the guys that I work with too, like, uh, you guys had, it, uh, Ramos under the other day, kind of, kind of very similar. We're like, my, my end goal, whatever it is, I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. so I, you could chop my legs off and I can't walk, I'm going to crawl it. Like I'm going, it, it may take me a day, it may take me a week, it may take me a year, but I'm going to get there. And then when I do, I'll be, you'll be there in the end and I'll be laughing. Right. Why do you, I mean, this, and we, we all know this, most of, most of the world is, is average. Right. Most people that you that you talk with are average. You know, they do their nine to five. They hate their job. They hate their life. They're always complaining. Mm -hmm. Very negative. I would say that's most people that I mm -hmm. meet. People, you know, whatever friends that I, I might have had in, in middle school or high school. Average, average. They, they have no aspirations. They don't they don't see anything. They, they don't see their life going anywhere. Okay. Why do you think that that people are OK with that? Is that number one, because they haven't been exposed to this environment, to what we're used to? 
or do they just they know about it but they're like hey it's just easier to stay how i am what do you think it is i think human nature at the end of the day is more is more uh wired to chill than to work you know so you know get what's easier to do uh get up at five and go work 16 hours or get up at noon and and uh you know miss breakfast and and watch a uh, watch netflix you know the quarantine is, you know, you guys talk a lot about the quarantine. I know that a lot of people ask that. Like the quarantine is really a great opportunity for you to look at yourself, especially like guys your age, you know, like people your age. It's like, oh, yeah, me, I'm, I'm older. I'm in a different, I'm in a different place. But like in, in those, in that early twenties where you don't have too much responsibility and maybe you have a job, maybe you don't like, what are you doing every day? And if you're doing nothing, that's, <laughs> you're answering your own question there, you know, but what, what I've told you and I've told you since, you know, we, we, you and I've had some good conversations and, and Gabe as well was like, those kind of people, you just got to cut them out. Bro. Just got to yeah. cut them out. You know, I, I know, I know how you are and how you guys are. You try to help certain people. And at the end of the day that I've lost friends along the way, it is what it is, but you got to surround yourself with, with the, with the right group, you know, cause I'm not trying to get it, get associated with people that are, you know, either doing stupid things or things that I don't think are, you know, in, in my line of uh, vision. So I'm going to hang out with the same guys. If you look at the guys that, I mean, you guys have seen me, you look at the guys that I, that I associate myself with, we're the same cats, yeah. same cats, Monday through Sunday. You can catch me at 5 a.m. You can catch me at midnight. I'm the same, same guys. Yeah. yeah. I like what you said there about, I mean, again, everyone talks about this whole quarantine as is, it's such a negative thing, obviously given the, the, the things going on with the coronavirus, it's obviously unfortunate, but I feel like you said, it's such a good opportunity to really reflect and oh, yeah. our age to really, you know, take a step back and look, you know, am I doing this right? Am I looking 10 years ahead? Am I doing like, what do I want from 10 years from now? Am I doing what I need to do now in order to attain that? Or mm -hmm. like you said, are you just waking up at one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, watching Netflix and going back to bed? You know, I think that's mm -hmm. so vital because I feel like even me, you know, I've had days where I'm like, damn, I really don't want to get up early. You know, let me sleep 10 minutes in. I'm like, all right, I, I kind of have to refocus myself and tell myself, look, this is my goal. And again, people kind of think, think of this whole quarantine, these couple months, um, as a big, you know, break. I've talked to a lot of, uh, business people. Um, I mean, me and Anthony have had discussions too about people in the business world kind of be like, Oh yeah, my business is kind of on hold right now to this all, you know, this whole thing is over. And I'm That's like, work. what are you doing? Like, this is the biggest opportunity that people like are waiting for to really, you know, whether it's to really jump on the next big thing or to just reevaluate yourself and get better. You know, and I think that's a huge thing for people like us that we have all the same mindsets that we can really, you know, we, we don't have the pride to kind of be like, ah, I'm good. Like I, I can keep, mm -hmm. keep going forward and we can really step back and be like, no, I think I can improve here. Let me, let me shift or pivot my, my strategy so I can, you know, when all the, when this is all over, we can go in the right direction. No, yeah, absolutely. I remember, you know, going back to that March 13th, I remember the day dri driving home there. I told want to talk to you about the running. Um, like my goal you know, it's going to sound stupid, but I thought to myself, like, I remember leaving when I left work that day. And again, there was supposed to be a game that they got canceled. A lot of people are saying, like, you know, if they're canceling school, like, bro, you know, I'm going to get out of shape or I'm going to watch this or do nothing. And I remember thinking to myself, like, like, what I wanted to do when I left that day was obviously raise the bar for myself, like how I talked about. But it was really more like whenever it is that we come back to full speed, I want to make sure that when we come back, people – see me or see what I'm doing and say, bro, this guy hasn't missed a step. <laughs> this guy hasn't missed a step. Like this guy, if anything's gotten better, you know, whether it's better shape or whether it's better work or whatever, it's like, how, how in that span did he get better? Mm -hmm. You know, because I would, I, you know, and it's not even talking about myself, but I would say, you know, kind of going to like what, what, what I was saying, I'd say probably 80 to 85% of, of, of the world when they get back to full speed is going to be, you know, 10 steps back, you yeah. know, and I want to be 10 steps ahead. You know, I'm always looking ahead, you know, but that's just, that's just the way I see it. Exactly. I, I feel like this is a perfect time for people like us, like-minded to like freaking like work, go a thousand miles an hour while everybody's sitting back. I mean, oh, this, yeah. is, this is what we wait for. This is like the kind of moments, unfortunately, obviously the precautions and the people dying, it's not what we're, you know, terrible situation. Mm -hmm. However, despite that, we only have one option, uh, two options really, to go or to stay. Right. And, and we got to go like right now is the time to go. This is where we separate ourselves. People always ask me like, Anthony, how do I, how do I separate myself? Well, right now is the time to separate yourself. The, train, like, the train's, the train's leaving the station. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. You get on the train. 
<laughs> you know how you know how that goes. Yeah, but anyway, just to change, uh, shift the topic a little bit, I've I've been listening to this uh, audio book that I started reading. It's called uh, "What's Your Why," right? Right, and and the whole purpose of the book is to whenever you start something, whether it's a job, a new business, a new relationship, always start with the question "Why." Why are you going to do this? Not how, not what is going to be why, right? And that goes at a, as an individual level or as a business. So coach, what is your why behind why you do everything? Not what you do or how you do it, but why? Like that deep meaning. Why do you do what you do? Hey, now, we're, now, now we're talking. That's lusty, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. You've, been, you've been planning that one for a little bit too. You was, that. Wait, wait till we get Kevin. I'm going to get him. Yeah. You got two times. Uh, yeah. Why I do what I do? Uh, you know, for not, not to get into specifics, because, uh, you know, there's so many different aspects. You can talk about uh, personality. You can talk about work. You can talk about working out. You can talk about coaching. There's a lot of aspects. Um, but for me, the, the why is probably um, to be like, I, I like I, I, one of the things I really kind of pride myself on is rubbing people the right way. Um, so why I do what I do is kind of to be remembered or to like make an impact on as many people as possible, like a positive impact. And one of the things I can say is, uh, you know, I'm pretty confident in the sense of, I don't want to say hundred percent cause there's probably a couple of people that, you know, will, will venture to go opposite, but I, I'm willing to say that, you know, I've been teaching for whatever it is, 11 years, a coach for, you know, seven, eight years. I've been an assistant coach. I've been a JV coach now, you know, I'm on AD, uh, met a ton of people. I've impacted a ton of kids. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very close to certain that I, I don't think that there's one person or, you know, very, very few, if that, that if you were to ask them, Dave, you know, you know, Kevin Esteban, that they're going to say something bad. Oh, you know, okay. that, that's kind of like my, my why is to make sure that I rub everybody, you know, in the best version of me possible so that, you know, when the day that you go somewhere and you say you went to St. Brendan or that you got coached by me, that person could say, damn, Kevin, but oh man, Kevin's a good, you know, and, and it goes off and the positivity builds off as opposed to when you go somewhere and someone says, oh, you know, Kevin, that I throw, and then they go off, at, you know, because the, the hardest thing about that, you know, being you is, is, is the baggage, you know, you talk about, for example, you or wherever it is that, that you're working now, whether it's with your parents or, or gay, you know, when you get into doing what you're doing, like, for example, if you had a bad day and you get on this podcast and you don't do the best podcast possible, you brought the baggage into what it is you're trying to do. And that's not the easiest thing in the world. You know, uh, right. people have people fight with their significant others. People have, you know, spill their coffee at 7 a.m. and they let it ruin their day, you know? Um, so the hardest thing is that, you know, leaving the baggage out to be the best version of, of yourself and rub everybody the right way. That's me though, you know? Right. And, and also leaving a legacy for your son. Same, yeah. same concept, right? Cause your son's going to come behind you, same last name. And when they hear Esteban, you know, it, Hopefully it, it's good. Like people make a good connection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, you just gotta, you know, the thing, the thing with good is obviously good's an opinion. You know, it's not, a, it's not a fact. Um, and you know, with, with the coaching stuff and the AD stuff, there's, there's obviously a lot of problem situations that come, you know, whether you get, you know, attitude or someone doesn't make a team or, you know, an issue and, and that stuff, you know, the hardest thing to do. And that's what me and Juan, you know, kind of see things the same way is, is always doing the right thing a hundred percent of the time. You know, because sometimes you cloud your vision and you want to do stuff for the wrong reasons. And right. that's where, you know, you, you get caught up in a real bad place and you, you lose the group of people that you're around when you do stuff like that, you know. Yeah, and, you, and you're always going to have people who won't agree with you, right? You just said it yourself. Like, even making the, uh, the decision that's right 100% sure, you're going to have that other half that are going to be like, yo, screw this guy. Like, Absolutely. That's what happens when you're a leader. When you're a leader, nobody's, not everybody's going to like you. You're, it, it's part of the job. You know, you're oh, gonna make yeah. a decision that's going to piss off a lot more people. You know, you know that that what you just said right there is is something that you know I've been. It's probably been two two and a half years going a year. Yeah, two and a half years where I think prior to being uh, in the position that I am now, um, mm -hmm. I was always someone that like what you just said never applied to me. You know, because I was just my my role was very minimal, so I never had any issues with anybody. Ever, right. ever, ever, ever. I was just like, oh, bro, Kevin, this is guy. And then, uh, you know, but my channel was so small that it was easy for me to do what I was doing and not really, you know, affect a lot of people because I didn't, you know, I didn't run a big percentage of anything, you know. Um, but being in the spot I am now, I have uh, a lot of people that, 
would, would beg to differ uh, their <laughs> opinions on me, but that's uh, that's part of that's part of what you said, you know. And uh, when I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the right thing 100% of the time, and that's gonna piss some people off, but it, it is what it is. And I'm I'm on I'm on this. It's like I said, I'm on this track right here, and you know, it's it, you know we're, we're like in the bowling alley with bumpers. Like I'm not going to the left lane, I'm not going to the right lane. So either we're going straight, we're going straight down, and if that means you, you're gonna get run. I'd like you to go in my direction, but if not, yeah, it's going to end bad for someone. It's not going to be me. Yeah, yep. right. <laughs> sure. Now, I mean, me and Anthony, we even talked about, about that in I think, a prior uh, podcast where, you know, I guess your first impression of someone is going to be your last impression. You know, and I like what you said there about, you know, you want to rub everyone the right way. And I guess that's, that's everyone's goal. You know I mean? And I guess that's all we can do because we don't ever know when we're going to, you know, cross somebody. We never know what, like what day we're going to meet someone or the big CEO or executive, you know, we always have to have that, you know, our game face on, you know, 24 seven. We can't really like pick and choose. Oh yeah. I feel like it this day. I feel like it that day. Like I can't do that. You At that point it's a show. Yeah. You can't do that. Cause it's, it's every day, 24 seven, you know? And it, I feel like, you know, another thing going back to like your why, I think something that I've noticed over the years, and I'm, I mean, I'm only 20 years old is I feel like people like your, your why I think changes over time. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe the first time you start a business, you, you might be starting your, you know, your why might be, Oh, you know, this is going to make me a lot of money. But you know, as soon as you see that, Oh, that fails, or maybe when you were 20, 25 years old, you say, Oh, I just want to work out. I want six packs. You know, I want all this, but mm -hmm. now yeah. you know, you're thinking long term, you know, you're a little bit older, like, you know, Anthony said, you want to leave a legacy for your son, your family's definitely, I'm sure, part of your why, about what you do and why you do it every day, you know, mm -hmm. so that's, that's awesome. I think, I think, I mean, would you say that your why has kind of shifted over the years? And do you think it's going to keep shifting? Or do you think you're already in the mindset where I'm all right, this is the, I'm the best version of myself, and no one's going to change my mindset in that aspect? Or do you think like your why is going to be changing? Kind of, from year to year you know the the the, the whole why thing i kind of you know as you've been saying and i keep in my mind you know trying to compare it to something that's easy for me to relate to and for me the why is kind of like what i you know what the bar is set at you know and and for me obviously i'm a i have a strong strong character um i, I talk a lot of you know i talk a lot of crap whatever it is but like for me if the bar's here what my why is keeping the bar there you know, and so like if the best version of me is, is having the bar here and that means whatever it is, being the, the best worker, best father, best husband, best, you know, whatever it is, the bar has to stay there. Now, it kind of goes back to what I said before, where there's going to be a lot of things where they kind of like try to bring the bar down, you know, and the bar is going to try to trickle down. And it's my job to keep that bar up because, you know, you know, if we, if we compare it to work, for example. One of the problems that I think, you know, the school had for a long time was obviously athletics were never big there. It is what it is. Um, but, you know, from, from you've seen, obviously, uh, how I am. I'm, uh, Gabe, I didn't coach you, but obviously, you know, me and Juan kind of see things the same way. So you can obviously relate. And Ant uh, obviously went through, went through the program. Um, you know, when, when I got into St. Brent and I was going year round, right, it was like literally I didn't even give the kids a month off. I went from zero to 100. Um and now, obviously, when I was doing that, the school was like, oh, Kevin, like, or relax, whatever it is, what it is. Um, now, six years later, the bar is set where the programs are all doing that. So for me, if we have 17 uh, programs and there's 17 head coaches, how can I expect them to go year round or practice on Christmas break or be there in the summer if I'm not? Yeah. You understand? Because right. I can say, I can say you're interviewing for a job and I say, well, Gabe, you know, uh, you're interviewing for the for the cross country head coach or whatever it is bowling, and I say, well, man, I want you to be here 365 days a year, and I want you to be here 24 seven. You say, well, oh, bro, that's what I'm here for, absolutely. And that first day when you get in the job, I'm not there. You're gonna say, bro, this guy's asking me to do this, and he's not even there. Like this guy's talking, it, it, it's it's he's talking shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Now for me, what I can say is that I'm the first one in every day. Everybody knows I'm I'm outworking everyone there, whether it's physically, hourly, whatever it is. I'm, I'm outworking everybody in that in, in in the athletic program. So for me, it's I myself am setting the bar here. So as coaches underneath me, I don't have to tell you to do stuff. You understand? For me, when I have what like that's the problem when you get into like the whole leadership stuff that you guys were asking about. If I have to ask people to do stuff or tell people to do stuff, that's not how I lead. That's not good. 
it's not going to work. Whether it's people that you get along with or people, whatever, you, you can't tell people what to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if I am doing those things every single day and you see them, you have no choice but to fall in line. Yeah. Right. What, what you're doing, I know we're running out of time here a little bit, so I'll, I'll keep it short. I know what you're doing is you're setting the culture, right? Like people mm-hmm. look up to the leader, okay, like what is the guy on top of me doing? And they kind mm-hmm. of go, they kind of do what yeah, you're doing. So, yeah, yeah. Which every business, every uh, sports team, every school has to have is a culture. Like if the culture is like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, relax, yo, oh. if practice, that's the culture. Those are the results yeah, you're going to yeah. get. So you get the culture, uh, the culture with the, with the bar high. And my last two cents that I want to add that I didn't get to add uh, when you were talking, Coach, is how you talked about your why is rubbing people the right way. And what I want to add to that is that people always remember how you make them feel, not necessarily what you say, right? You know, I've had so many times <laughs> over the years. You know, I've talked to you about several things and issues and whatnot. I don't remember everything, but what I do remember is how you made me feel. You made me feel like you cared. You made me feel, you know, all those different things. Like, same thing with Gabe. Gabe and I have had so many conversations. I don't remember every single one. I don't remember the last oh, thing he told me. Yeah. But I remember how he makes me feel, which is like, we're in it together. So that, that's a great legacy to have. If people remember how you make them feel, not what you say, what you do. That's what we always tell the players, bro. You know, that's our famous phrase on, on the staff. It's don't, yeah. don't listen to what I'm saying, bro. Listen, you know. You know how yeah, it is. Yeah, Coach Juan will say it a bunch of times. Like, don't listen to what I'm saying. Just yeah, yeah, because then you get into yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, listen to what I'm saying. Don't look at how I'm acting. That was that was weird. Because he, he yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he would say, listen to what he's saying. And same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he had the right message. He had the right message. Yeah, the message. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, what you just told me is that you're leading by example, and to me, I think that's the best type of leader there is. You know, I mean. I've been in, I guess, leadership positions. I mean, whether it's the captain of the basketball team or whatever the case is. And to be honest, I was never a vocal person, to be really honest. I felt like my way, like my way of leading was like what you're saying. If I'm doing it, you know, fall in line, do what I do. You know, and I, to me, my opinion, I mean, any, everyone's opinion is different, but I think that's the best type of leader to have, you know, to really look up to someone that's doing what you need to be doing or the expectation of what you need to be doing. No, yeah, I think uh, with, with the leadership stuff, like, yeah, leadership is obviously it's another opinionated thing where you guys talk and I see the people you bring on and you talk about, you know, oh, how do you, how do, you do this or how do you lead or what's the best method of leading or how do you handle these people or whatever. And to me, it's not about, like, you don't even have to tell people stuff. You know, a true leader doesn't have to, you know, you don't have any, like, for me, it's not even reprimanding people or, like, telling people what to do or whatever. It's just, like, I'm just going to do me. I'm going to do what I do and you're, you're going to have no choice. You're either going to do it or you're just going to weed yourself out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. I'm just going to do what I do and then you're going to see it and say, damn, like I got, like I got to keep up or I got to try to keep up. And if not, you just go fall to the back of the line and you're going to, you're going to end up leaving before I have to tell you something. Right. Right. You know yeah. That's the way. The, that, the, that's the, go ahead. Go ahead. Real, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a real, a real leader or like the best leader. It's not someone who's talking or saying or, or managing or doing all those things. Those things are all, gar- at least to me, that, that's all garbage. Yeah. That's all garbage. You know, a real leader just does. Right. You just do. Right. You just do. Like, Gabe and I like to say that that's what we call managers, right? They manage people. Yeah, yeah, Leaders yeah. Leaders don't yeah, manage. Stuff. Leaders lead. Leaders yes. Lead. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. But, anyway, but there's, a lot, there's, a, there's a lot of managers. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of managers. I mean, we, we know so many people that, that are bad leaders that they call themselves leaders, but in reality, they're just, they're, they're just, they're just managers is what they are. Mm-hmm. It's what yeah. it is. It's what it is. But anyway, <laughs> we'll make sure not to delete this one. We recorded it. So it'll be good <laughs> to go. Hopefully this one airs on Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us, Ke- uh, Coach Kevin. Thanks for having me on, man. Fuck. <laughs>